Hey there, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com. And as you can see, No Shave November is going strong, but I uh, didn't want to let that stop me from shooting a video on the Visconti Opera Master Crimson Tide Limited Edition pen. Now that is a mouthful, I know, but for as much as this pen costs, I figure it should have a long name, right? Um, so this is kind of a special pen for us. So Visconti uh, was actually an Italian company founded in 1988, and uh, we had the founder, Dante Del Vecchio, actually visit our shop here in October, and we have a uh, Periscope video that we've put on YouTube that is um, showing basically how the filling mechanism, the double reservoir power filler, works for this particular pen. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, but that's uh, that's kind of what this pen is, is more known for, is having that kind of unique filling system. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. I'm going to show you uh, what essentially a thousand dollar pen looks like in this video. It's the most expensive pen that I've ever reviewed to date. So I'm kind of excited to show that to you. It's actually an exclusive that we have here at GouletPens.com. So that's pretty cool. Um, the Crimson Tide is one that they've had available previously with a gold trim but this one is going to be two versions a rose gold and then a black trim as well and there's only going to be 20 of each one they are numbered limited editions 20 and then that's it they are gone so I'm going to show you what they're all about here today so let's take a look at the packaging that you get with a pen like this now it's a large box very large you know here's my hand and it's it's a pretty good size uh, compared to what you typically get with most fountain pens and uh, you take off the cover and one thing that i really like about this box is that it's got this flap on the front so normally when you have a box that's this size and you're trying to get in there and you're trying to bend your fingers and it's kind of a pain but this is nice it's got this nice little uh, protective thing on here and then you can see a very prominent visconti logo on the top it's a nice hard box. It's very heavy. This whole thing weighs about two pounds. So it's really, you feel like, mm, yeah, you're getting your money's worth, right? Um, so then you just kind of gently kind of cradle and pull this thing out of the box. Um, and it's nice. It's got a felt lining on the bottom. So if you wanted to store it on a nice wood desk like I have here, then it's uh, not going to scratch it or anything like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then the box itself is made of some kind of wood, but it's clearly coated in some kind of very thick lacquer type material or something. I don't know exactly what the box is made of, but it's really sturdy box. And it's a, it's a box that I would feel like I could put in kind of leave out in presentation form somewhere. It's not just a box that I would likely stick away. So if you wanted to kind of present it, um, it does look really nice. And then when you open it up, you get to see the inside is this nice uh, like leatherette feeling uh, stuff. Um, it's a nice kind of cream colored in here. And it's got the Visconti logo in the top, very prominent as well. So if you Again, if you wanted to leave it kind of like displayed out like this, it looks really nice. It has a tray that you pull out, um, which has the pen resting in it, and that's where it reveals your hidden compartment down at the bottom. Um, and it has a card, which has some information on it. Um, you know, it's got a code for it, and it has a numbered, uh, which matches the pen. It num the pen itself is engraved with a number, but it has a card that kind of matches it too. And then it has a card in here, uh, not a card, but a, a little booklet that has you know, a little bit of history of the company and how the pen's made and has some celebs that promote Visconti and as well as some other really, really, really nice looking pens that you can drool over. Um, so assuming we don't need any more of the box, that's where you can pull out the pen. And the pen just comes wrapped in this plastic here to kind of protect it. And then voila, here we go. So the material for this pen is really gorgeous. Um, it's, I would consider it to be a demonstrator pen, but it has um, this blend of a clear uh, as well as red and white kind of ribbon, I would call it, that goes throughout the pen. So it really it just looks uh, it's really unique looking, and um, they Visconti has done this type of material in a couple different colors, um, but uh, the red one is what they call their Crimson Tide. It, basically, it's a blend of acrylic and celluloid, so they call it Acryloid, which I think is kind of an interesting name. Basically, it's a blend of acrylic resin and celluloid. And what that does is it gives you a benefit of kind of both materials. Celluloid is a very smooth kind of uh, material that has is warm to the touch. It's a natural material that's made um, from you know uh, plants, basically um, from the plant cell walls in plants. And the benefits of having that is it, uh, it doesn't scratch as easily. Um, it kind of self-polishes a little bit as you rub your fingers on it. And it's uh, very resilient as well. It's a very durable material. 
Um, the drawback of celluloid typically is that it has uh, stain tendencies, but that's where the acrylic part comes in. Um, the acrylic helps to balance out kind of that stain uh, tendency for the celluloid. So this is really kind of getting the best of both worlds. So the one thing about this material is that every single pen is going to have a very unique pattern to it. This ribbon is cast into the material. It's not injection molded or anything like that. It's cast and then turned and then it's polished both on the outside and on the inside. So it's really got kind of a flawless finish on both inside and outside, which makes it really nice to see all the way through the pen. You can see how the internal components work. It's very, very cool that way. Um, but it is going to make it so that, you know, I have my pen here, but yours could have a completely different pattern to it, which makes it kind of cool. Now, this Opera Master is a huge pen. It's very heavy. It's very large. I have very large hands, and even still, it is a large pen for me. I actually find it to be fairly comfortable. But for those with smaller hands, this pen is going to be literally a handful. Um, they have a unique shape to this, uh, to this pen. They call it squaring the circle. And it's really interesting because it has basically four square flat sides that are kind of rounded corners. And this is a design that Visconti actually patented. Uh, and it was inspired by da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. And part of the benefit of that is it's very ergonomic in the hand. It doesn't have any sharp corners or anything, but at the same time, it allows the pen to stay flat on the desk and it's not gonna roll off. And it also makes it really nice when you go to post it. Uh, it's always gonna stay lined up to match. So there's only, well, basically four ways that you can post it onto the pen. So it's pretty easy to make sure that everything lines up nicely. Now, when you post it, it does make it incredibly long. I mean, I have large hands from my palm to the tip of my finger is about eight inches. So that's, uh, if yeah, it gives you any kind of a reference here, but even still, it's very large and it's gonna be, um, Pretty well balanced, a little bit back heavy when it's not posted. Uh, the, the finial on this thing, the filler knob, is, is actually quite heavy. That's where a lot of the weight's coming from on the back of this pen. So it feels just a little bit back weighted. If you're smaller hands and you're holding it more to the front, it might feel a little more back weighted. So some people prefer that, other people you know, don't. It's really just kind of a, up to you. Now, if you post it, it makes the pen really long and really back heavy. So I can't imagine that posting it will be comfortable for most people. Um, so me personally, I tend to kind of set it aside, but the, it is kind of nice, the fact that you can set it down. It's got that squared edge. So you can have it where the clip's kind of facing up or you can have it so the clip faces, you know, straight up towards you and you can look at it and it's not gonna roll away. So that's kind of nice. So the grip of this pen is fairly large because the pen itself is large. Now it is tapered down from the body of the pen. So that's kind of nice. Um, and it is a metal grip, so it's a little bit slick. I know that can be kind of a thing for some folks. I don't find it to be particularly bothersome with this pen. Um, where I tend to hold my pen, um, as most of the Visconti pens that have the metal grips, uh, my thumb actually ends up sitting right on the threads, which gives me a nice kind of place to grip. So uh, that actually works for me pretty well. And even though it has a slight taper to it, it flares up a little bit towards the end. So it's not like uh, other pens like the Lamy Studio, for example, where it kind of has a tendency to slip off the pen. It does give you kind of a nice place to kind of ground it right onto the grip there. So that I don't mind at all. And then just to give you an idea of the size of this pen, I have a couple other pens you might be familiar with. Um, the Pilot Metropolitan, um, next to this Crimson Tide here, Opera Master. So you can see there, especially on the grip, how much larger the grip on the Opera Master is. And then the overall size of the pen, to give you an idea, especially if I post it, it's going to be quite a bit larger. And then another fairly large pen uh, from Visconti is the Homo Sapiens. This is the full-size Homo sapiens. They have two versions of it, the midi and then the full-size. It's even longer than the full-size Homo sapiens, which I know a lot of people think is also very long. So it is a very, very large pen. Hopefully I've made that clear at this point. The weight of this pen is 60 grams, which officially makes it the heaviest pen that we've ever sold at Goulet Pens to date. So if you're familiar with, you know, the Jinhao 159, very large and heavy pen, bigger and heavier than that, okay? So that, uh, it's it kind of just sets the record, which for me is like, okay, if you're buying an expensive pen, I want it to be kind of hefty, you know? So for me, it kind of like, all right, it helps to validate some of that kind of stuff. So the body of the pen itself is 39 grams, and then the cap is 21 grams, which to give you an idea, just the cap of the pen is about as heavy as a Lamy All-Star. 
And then the body of the pen is almost as heavy as the Visconti Homo sapiens, full size, the whole pen. <laughs> so it's, it's heavy. So the nib on this pen is fantastic. If you have any experience with the Visconti Homo sapiens, the large size, it's that same 23 karat palladium dream touch nib, the larger size one that comes on the Opera Master. And it writes really well. It's a made of palladium, which is not a material that you see a lot. It's mainly kind of a Visconti thing, but it's going to feel a lot like gold. So if you're familiar with kind of an 18 karat gold nib that's kind of soft, it's got kind of the same springiness of a lot of the Omos 18 karat nibs. It writes really well. They're very, very wet and somewhat springy too. So you can get a little bit of line variation while you're writing with them. Not that I would say that's like the primary reason why you should use it, because if you want to use a flex pen, you can get a lot cheaper ones than this. Uh, but I would say that this is a really fantastic writing nib. Now there are two different versions of this nib depending on which pen you're getting. If you're getting the rose gold trim, you're gonna get the silver color nib, which is just the pure palladium, it's uncoated. If you're getting the black trim version, the nib is going to be plated in that black. Still that same palladium nib, it's gonna write and feel exactly the same, but it's just a different color to match the trim on there. So the design of the nib is really beautiful. It's a stamped nib where it's got the Visconti uh, name and some flourishing on there, and it's got a crescent-shaped breather hole too. So it's got a really nice uh, kind of visual appeal to the nib. And there are four different nib options available for the Opera Master. It's extra fine, fine, medium, and a 1.3 millimeter stub nib. And depending on which nib you're going to get, you might get different numbers. However, we can swap the nibs out. So if you have a specific request for number and nib size that's not naturally coming on the pen, we can swap them out for you. Now let's talk about how this pen fills. This is one of the coolest and most unique things about this particular pen, this Opera Master. It has what Visconti calls their double reservoir power filler, which I think sounds sufficiently awesome for a pen of this caliber. Uh, but essentially, if you're familiar with a vacuum filling system, that's what we're dealing with here, but with some modification to it. So if you're familiar with the concept of a vacuum filler pen, basically it has a piston that is on the piston rod. You put it down into your ink well, and then you just push down. Doing that creates a seal, which creates a negative pressure on the inside, and then it drops off right at the last second, which then causes the ink to rush up into the pen. So that's the same concept as what you have on the Pilot Custom 823, the Twisby VAC 700, and the Visconti Homo Sapiens in the larger size, as well as several of their other pens. But the, what makes this unique is the, what they call the double reservoir part. So basically with other vacuum filling pens, the vacuum seal uh, basically seals off right behind the feed. So there's not a good reservoir of ink available right at the feed, which means you can write with it for a little bit, but unless you unscrew the back of the pen and allow the ink to flow through, it's gonna dry up on you after a relatively short period of time because that's one of the benefits of having these vacuum filling pens is the fact that when it's closed, it can seal off. It's not like that for every vacuum filling pen that's ever been made, but all of the modern ones that I'm aware and that I have ever carried all have that feature of having a seal and you seal it off. Um, the benefit of that is when you're traveling, especially on an airplane, it basically seals off your entire ink chamber, which on a pen this large that holds this much ink is a really, really nice uh, feature to be able to have. The ink chamber here is about 3.4 milliliters, which is huge. But the nice thing is it's got that second reservoir, which is gonna be about 0.6 milliliters or similar to a standard international short cartridge uh, quantity that's gonna be in front of that seal. So you can write with the pen without having to open up the filler knob. And it's gonna write basically as if it was a standard cartridge converter pen in terms of the ink quantity. And then when you need to put more ink into your pen, it's very easy because you can see the ink level. All you gotta do is unscrew the knob and then let a little bit of ink drop down in there and then close it back up. And you're not gonna be able to do that all that, you're not gonna have to do that all that often because you're gonna be able to write quite a bit with a cartridge's worth of ink. And then the nice thing is when you need to fly with it or go travel with it, you just turn the pen upside down, unscrew it, and that ink will drop back down into the main reservoir. You seal it back up, and then you don't have any ink that's gonna be in that primary reservoir to 
flow out of your pen if you're gonna be flying with it. So that is the concept behind this double reservoir power filler. Picking up the Visconti Opera Master to write with it, it really is a fantastic writing experience. I gotta say, the Dream Touch nib on this pen is unlike pretty much any other nib you're going to use. It's really springy, very soft, incredibly, incredibly wet. On this particular pen, I've got a medium nib, and this medium is gonna write like most other broads, maybe even double broads if you write heavy-handed but it's unbelievably smooth. I mean, you're not gonna get a much smoother writing experience than this. The Opera Master is gonna write really wet. I mean, most of the Visconti pens are gonna write pretty darn wet as it is, uh, but this one is gonna be very, very wet. So make sure that you're using, uh, you know, inks that are not lubricated because that's going to really extend your dry time quite a bit. You know, use conventional inks. I would say because of how wet it is, you may wanna use something that's a little less saturated uh, in color. That way you can take advantage of some of the beautiful shading that you're gonna get. And you wanna try and keep your dry time a little bit to a minimum. So you don't need to use fast dry inks, but using just kind of conventional inks uh, would be best. So the cap on the Opera Master is a screw thread. And uh, it does take a couple of rotations to do it. It's not gonna come off in one rotation unless you really kind of do it. So it might take a couple. Um, and then it just posts uh, by pushing onto the back of it. Looking a little bit closer at the cap, it's a very large cap. And it has um, a couple of different things that are worth pointing out. One of them is that the center band has the word opera carved into it. And uh, that's about it. It's a very thick center band, but it doesn't have a lot of embellishment on it. Very kind of plain looking center band. It has the Visconti, um, you know, uh, bridge clip based off the Ponte Vecchio bridge in Florence and it's a spring clip as well you know clip it onto your your shirt or whatever and the way that you do that best is by grabbing the clip pulling it out like that and then you put it into your pocket and then let it go because of the design of the clip it doesn't make it super easy to just kind of slide it into your pocket you got to pull it out a little bit there as the Visconti logo in here that is enameled in the background to match the red in the pen. So that's really kind of a nice touch. And then in the top, it has the uh, Visconti logo, which is part of the, what they call their My Pen system. So it's actually a magnetic um, little finial that you can pull out of the pen. You can swap in stones or other accents that Visconti makes available uh, in the top there. So that's kind of neat. There's a couple special things worth pointing out with this pen. They are individually numbered and they're numbered, it's kind of interesting the way they're doing it. There's only 20 pens of each finish that are gonna be available, but it's numbered out of 18. So they're doing one through 18 as well as zero out of 18 and double zero out of 18. So it's kind of an interesting way that they're doing it there. They like to end on eight when they can because eight is essentially a lucky number. It'll match the card that's in with your you know, packaging. The other thing that we're doing that's kind of cool with this is we're not only offering the pen, but we're offering an additional two pen Visconti leather case. So you can carry around your nice new pen in your case, as well as what other, whatever other Visconti you may have or another pen of that type. Um, but it's a nice Italian leather, really, really nice pen cases. That's coming with the pen as kind of a nice little add on for you. So the Opera Master typically sells for $1,095. That's usually what Visconti wants to do as an MSRP. We did talk to them. It is an exclusive to us, so we kind of worked with them. So we are gonna be selling it for $995. So it's a little bit less expensive than you would typically see for an Opera Master. And you're getting that pen case along with it. So that's kind of cool. So we wanted something neat to do for our first exclusive with Visconti. So. Hopefully that is something that you will enjoy. If you like this pen and you want to learn more about it, you can check it out on GouletPens.com. You can see some gorgeous pictures and a lot of the technical details of the pen. If you have any questions about it, you can ask here on YouTube or on the blog, or you can email our team at info at GouletPens.com. And if you like this video and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and right on.